Hey, it's Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. What's the future of health? I'm talking to the who's who of health tech and healthcare innovation. And today we are going to talk to an early stage startup, but what, 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 early stage startup that's raising, that's doing some really exciting things with voice technology to detect diseases. And the thing that's really exciting about this company is that they've already have a US patent that's been granted, several others in the pipeline, some ISO certifications, regulatory approval in the EU and in Israel, and, uh, and some clinical, clinical studies that that have been done right that have the proved validity so welcome please to the show james amihood he is the ceo of cardio call it's a pleasure to talk to you hi jessica i'm really happy to be here today thank yeah you. the pedigree here is pretty impressive so thank you for stopping by so i'm sure we've got everybody's attention but why don't you dive in for us and just let's start we were talking about the vision for your company which i understand right now is proving out its use case detecting arrhythmias to prevent strokes and other complications there. But why don't you tell us a little bit about CardioCol and, and what the, the big vision is for this voice technology that you've developed? So great, Jessica. We'll talk about how we use voice basically to save lives. And the big vision is to take your mobile phone or smart speaker and for to sit wherever it is to detect and to monitor an array of different diseases. Okay, so this, the, what you do now is put your focus on arrhythmia and detecting arrhythmia using people's voices. And so on their smartphone, they're talking and you're able to detect arrhythmia. Tell me a little bit about how that technology works. So basically the, what we do is we use voice, as I mentioned, to detect different diseases and also to monitor them. We focus in the first in the field of atrial fibrillation it's one of the main causes of stroke, heart failure, kidney failure, and dementia, and a lot of other complications. And that's where we're focusing predominantly. It's an asymptomatic disease, up to 90% of the episodes. It develops over months or over years. And the detection of this disease done by an ECG, that's the gold standard, is less than 5%. Okay, so less than 5% with the gold standard best practice ECG, but what are you able to, what are you, how often are you able to detect arrhythmias or, or prevent strokes using your technology? What, how does that compare? So the beauty of what we're able to do is first of all, we're able to improve the detection out there by hundreds of percent. The key attributes, what we do is to monitor those patients in a cost effective way over long periods of time. And of course, pick up a lot of the asymptomatic episodes that we talked about. All right, well, tell us how this magic works. So cost effective, long term, picking up symptoms that are typically unrecognized. Like, tell us how it works. So it sits basically on a mobile phone or a smart speaker or any voice user interface. It can be even be done on a, what's called the landline. Oh, I remember and those. <laughs> and, we, and we take the voice, we analyze it using deep learning and signal processing to assess if the patient has got probable atrial fibrillation or not. That's the first vocal biomarker uh, that we're using and we're developing now. And we're using, we'll use this platform, of course, to roll out additional vocal biomarkers for other diseases. We've already launched a product, by the way, locally. We've already detected our first patients as well. And now we're gearing up, of course, also to move into Europe, where, as you mentioned, we've got regulatory approvals, and then, of course, to the States. Okay, awesome. Well, I want to hear about how this how this works from a business model standpoint, because I love hearing about, you know, how how this kind of technology gets rolled out so that it does have the ability to improve people's health and mass. So I understand you're operating like you just said. So you're you're based in Israel, and so you've you've got approvals in Israel and in Europe. So that's probably one business model I'm going to imagine. So tell us a little bit about that, and then let's talk about the U.S. after. So exactly. So we've already, as I mentioned, launched the product locally. We're using a telemonitoring company. We've got different uh, agreements already with the HMOs. We'll be doing the same in Europe, and we're talking to a few already. That's the business model for locally and for Europe. Okay. But for the U.S., it's a different kettle of fish, as you probably well know. <laughs> yes, we totally do know that our health system is very different. So tell us how, how CardioCol gets rolled out into the U.S. So in the U.S., what we're planning to do is we plan to work actually through the medtech companies as well. And that's a trigger, of course, to work to the providers and the payers there. 
We know there's a real unmet need. We've done a lot of market research there as well. And that's the first stage. But the long-term vision, of course, is to go through what I've talked about, the tech platforms. No, that sounds, I mean, it sounds like a natural fit, you know, for, for these tech platforms to integrate something like this in. And very many of them are jumping into healthcare. So this might not be a bad bet. Before we, we let you go, James, tell us a little bit about like the patient experience on this and the provider experience on this. Like, tell us what the it, what the interface is like for the patient. You know, how how long do they have to talk? How often do they have to talk? Like, get get us a little bit deeper into the actual how it works. So the first product that we've launched is basically two voice samples a day for five seconds each time. The patient is actually prompted and reminder to do a voice sample only for five seconds on a daily basis. That's the first product we've actually launched. The second product is also very exciting. We've finished a proof of concept with very good results already. That will run silently in the background. So that okay. means that the patient won't need to do anything. At the end of the day, as long as the patient is talking, we're not listening to the voice. We're not actually recording it. We've got regulatory approvals, as I mentioned, that cover a lot of these aspects on privacy. And we take the vocal biomarker from the voice, we analyze it, and then we raise a flag. And what we do is we can fit straight into the patient's electronic medical record, straight away into it, and then the physician can access it and know what the status of the patient is. Wow, okay, so say a little bit more about the, the physician side then too on this. So what exactly are they seeing? It's going straight into their record. And then it's like, what kind of data are they being given? And then like, what happens next? Like how, because I mean, the, the point of this that's remarkable to me is that it's really, I mean, it's effective in terms of preventing some really serious illnesses that will not go typically detected. So it's, what does the physician see? And then connect the dots for us all the way to the, to the happy ending. <laughs> Okay, so what the physician will see if the patient's actually, it's a deterministic disease. Either you've got atrial fibrillation or you haven't. What the physician will see is based on those voice recordings, how many times the patient's got atrial fibrillation. We can actually give another very important message that hasn't gone into the guidelines yet in America. And that's actually the burden of the disease, the amount of time the patient is suffering from atrial fibrillation. And then based on this, the physician will look at the record and to decide what to do. Will they then give them an ECG, that's the gold standard, okay? And what other procedures they will follow up they need to do. All right, so James, this is all so exciting. And I'm just curious, you know, like what's next for you guys? We teased at the beginning that, you know, Cardiocole is raising a round, it's raising a Series A. So tell me what happens, you know, with the Series A funding and, you know, even longer term, you know, I'm sure scaling up is very important, but, you know, how do you ultimately achieve that big vision for the company to expand into different biomarkers and, and solve for different diseases? So we've already got great investors on board. We've got a big pharma company. We've got leading U.S. electrophysiologists on board. Really fantastic people supporting us. And we want to take the money from Series A and focus primarily in the field of commercial aspects. That means going into Europe, going into the U.S. as well, doing more clinical trials, and naturally expanding our base of vocal biomarkers. We want to be at the end of the day, as I mentioned, on any platform, if it be on mobile phone or on a smart speaker and detect and monitor a large amount of diseases. That is so exciting. Well, thank you so much. Definitely come back when that Series A closes so we can just hear how it went. And yeah, keep us posted for sure on this technology. I love voice. I feel like that's one of the more exciting technologies in healthcare because it's just so ambient and, and it's just it's a great way to, to do so many different things. So thank you, James, for stopping by and telling us all about CardioCall. Thank you very much, Jessica. Thank you for having me. For more interviews with the who's who of health tech as they are changing the way that we do healthcare, head on over to my YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash WTF Health. I'm Jessica DeMassa. Thanks again for joining us. Thanks again, James. We'll talk to you soon. Take care, everybody. Bye.